Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Greatest Book Never Published, the podcast where we read The Greatest Book Never Published. Um, and I am Nim, and I am joined here by... Nate the Great. And Steve. <laughs> and Steve. <laughs> um, so, if you don't know, um, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, uh, go back and do that, because you'll be lost. You won't have the context for this, so basically... I wrote a book when I was 13 and we're reading it in this podcast. That's what the podcast is. So if you want the rest of the context, go back to the other episodes. Anyways, let's jump in. So where did we last leave off? I think we're... Uh, you want to so, explain this time, Nate the Great? Huh? You want to explain this time? Yeah. So basically, the uh, uh, Nate got kidnapped Nate and got his kidnapped. girlfriend. Uh-huh. And then like the, the other three... Got to this CIA CIA base that's got like all kinds of all kinds of cool weapons and stuff, and yeah, yeah, that's pretty, yeah. Much, pretty much it. But they're this gonna futuristic be nineteen eleven superheroes. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> futuristic nineteen eleven. Sh- all right, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get going. Chapter twenty nine. Zach Thompson. So this is Zach Thompson. Okay. Show me how you shoot. I say to Steve, who knows nothing about guns. We are standing in the pistol range Tuesday afternoon. Oh, this is the next day. Because remember, it was Monday before. Yeah. Um, Steve is holding a 1911 that apparently can shoot accurately at 75 yards. (laughs) I guess we'll find out if that's true soon enough. Just so you know, it won't be that accurate, he says. I've never really shot a gun before. That's okay, I say, remembering how I was taught to shoot 11 years ago. Just shoot. Wait, so that means he was taught to shoot. Yeah, he's 17. He's 17. So five. No, six. 11 years ago. That's six. Oh, yeah, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) So he was taught to shoot. I can't can't math right now. (laughs) That's okay, I say, remembering how I was taught to shoot 11 years ago. Just shoot, and I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. Good way. That's a good advice. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah. Turns yeah. it backwards. This. <laughs> <laughs> Funny nope. answer. That's wrong. <laughs> Just, <laughs> after he pulls the trigger. No, I think you did something wrong. <laughs> um, here it goes. He says as he takes a deep breath. As he pulls the gun up, I notice his first mistake. He's holding it sideways the same way you see gangsters do it. <laughs> Oh my god! I did this, but I'd used this stereotype earlier too, in the like first four chapters. I guess it's what you get for growing up in New York City. <laughs> oh my god, dude! The city, the city hate is real. Um, his next mistake is that his stance is completely wrong. His legs are tight together, and his back is bending backwards. <laughs> His next mistake is that he doesn't take his time. He pulls the trigger right away, and the shot doesn't even make it close to the target. It's like it's his first time shooting a gun or something. What the heck? (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) See, he says, I told you I wouldn't be very good. I'm just not cut out for shooting. Nonsense, I say. It just takes a little practice. And you're not doing it right either. First of all, you don't hold the gun sideways. That is exactly why gangsters have terrible aim. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, that's facts right there. <laughs> Straight oh. facts. <laughs> oh my gosh. So stupid. <laughs> terrible aim. You also need to hold it with both hands like this. I grab the gun from him and hold it up the proper way. Hold your right hand tightly on the handle with your thumb wrapped around behind for some stability. Hold your pointing finger up here, um, ready to move down to the trigger, but only when you're ready to fire. Now take your left hand and wrap it around on the other side so that they overlap your other fingers. Um... (laughs) Look down the sights and line them up on your target 
<laughs> when you're ready to fire, move your trigger finger down. Take a deep breath. Slowly squeeze the trigger as you exhale. And I take the shot, and it hits the target dead center. Ooh. There you go. Is this a 75-yard target? <laughs> like you said. <laughs> I want to see if this is actually accurate. Um, there you go. That's how you shoot a handgun. I guess this really is accurate up to 75 yards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's all I have to do and I'll be accurate. Steve asks, well, not exactly, I say. It takes a steady hand and a lot of practice, but I think with time you could be a professional handgun shooter. Okay. <laughs> Zach, I hear Jameson say. I look over and see that he is standing next to the door. I found something. I need you to come here. Keep practicing, I say to Steve as I follow Jameson out the door. I follow Jameson out. Uh, I don't know if I'd leave him alone with the gun. He's probably going to actually shoot himself. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> what if I point it this way? <laughs> Keep practicing, I say to Steve as I, I mean, follow Jameson. He's like door. depressed all the time. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> he's like, I forgot. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, there's no point to life. <laughs> yeah. Um, I follow Jameson out of the training room and into some science lab. I see a lot of electronic gadgets and scientific equipment. Jameson goes to the other end of the room and sits at a desk next to a computer. Come here, he says. Sit down right here. Come here, he says. Sit down right here. He is pointing at another chair. I walk over and sit in the chair. So, I say, why exactly did you call me here? What is it you want to show me? Well... I found something very interesting. Remember when I took blood samples so I could test what exactly the infection did to you? Oh, apparently he did that off screen. <laughs> or off page, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I say, remembering yesterday when he took blood samples from Steve and I. Well, I found out what it did to you. Each molecule has a lot of empty space in it. Some scientists have tried to make ways for the matter in one molecule to pass through the space of another, which would cause the effect of one molecule passing through another. Somehow that is what is happening with you, and you can pass through solid objects. Do we need a scientific explanation? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded you were so scientific. <laughs> also able... To, well, it's like, yeah, like how a molecule could pass through a molecule, I guess. Like I, yeah. I see the logic, but I was like, why do we need that? You are also able to turn completely solid and indestructible. That is because every single molecule in your body has become packed extremely tight together, which has formed an almost indestructible solid. But that is not all I wanted to tell you. I thought about it, and I figured, if you can turn completely solid, why can't you turn into any of the other states of matter? Wait, so are you saying I should be able to turn into a liquid or a gas? Yes. What? what? He responds. That is exactly what I am saying. <laughs> Nerd. I just wanted to try to prove my theory, so why don't you test it? Okay, I say. I guess I'll try. I take a deep breath. I close my eyes and concentrate. I sit there for a second, then open my eyes and look down. I am amazed at what I see. I am melting. <laughs> <laughs> Turning into a liquid. <laughs> You know what I'm just thinking about, though, is if he does that, wouldn't his, his, his like, clothes fall off? <laughs> if he just turns into a <laughs> liquid? I'm just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. Turning into a liquid. This, for sure, is the most amazing thing I have ever seen myself do. <laughs> Besides phasing through the wall. <laughs> okay. Wait. Can he turn invisible? Or, or, or not invisible, but, like... Go through phase, objects. Phase. What does yeah, clothes what, fall off then do? Like, that's also true. Yeah, you're right. They fall right off. You're right. I guess anything he's touching, he can make do that too. Mm -hmm. Keep concentrating, Jameson says. Try to see if you can move on to a gas. I do exactly what he says. I keep concentrating. I sit there for a few seconds <laughs> as I am melting and notice that I am beginning to rise. I did it. I actually turned my whole body into a gas. I then decide <laughs> this experiment is over and I turn back into my normal form. I guess I decide this experiment is over. <laughs> wow, Jameson says. That is amazing. It actually worked. 
you can control your molecules to either move away from wait you can control your molecules to either move away from each other or closer what did it feel like i'm actually not quite sure i say in amazement it felt awesome awesome man. being gas is feels wait. awesome uh, if you could turn into gas and liquid, shouldn't his other one be? He can turn into ice. No, no, it's not. He's not. Water. He's not water. <laughs> he's turning to liquid. But it still okay. doesn't make sense. He could turn no, into gas either. But you know, but he can turn into all the different phases of matter: gas, liquid, solid. That's his power. But he's already solid. He's already a solid. <laughs> no, no, a human being is not all solid. It's a mixture of solid, liquid, and gas. Really. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he turns completely, so it turns more like extremely solid, like the molecules pack together a lot more to make him like super solid. Isn't that like <laughs> make him shrink? <laughs> I mean, I don't think, yeah, but I guess not. Oh, uh, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> this is why it's better to not come up with scientific explanations for your superpowers. Just be yeah. like, yeah, you have a superpower. You yeah, can do it just is what it is. <laughs> All right, let's continue. I'm actually not quite sure, I say in amazement. It felt awesome. We will train so you can move from one to the other faster, Jameson says. But as for right now, we should take a break. <laughs> Tested for two seconds. We should take a break. <laughs> All right, end of chapter. Um, that's exciting. So Zach is still discovering new superpowers, even now. I, I think that's all those superpowers figured out, though. Because I don't think there's any new powers for anybody to figure out. Because... Hmm. Steve already figured out that he can speed and do the shockwave thing and, you know. Yeah. Anyways. Chapter 30. Stephen Richards. Stephen Richards. I am practicing what Zach has taught me about shooting. I'm getting better, but I'm still not nearly as good as Zach. I guess that's because he's been shooting a lot longer than I have. As I am about to take another shot, Jameson comes in and says, Stop what you're doing. I have something to show you. Oh, does he have something to show him about his powers too? Okay. Hmm. I put the gun down and follow him into another room. The room is really big with all kinds of mechanical car parts laying all over. Okay, I say. What is it you want to show me? That, he says as he points to a big object on the other side of the room. I can't really tell what it is at first. I stare at it for a second and realize that it is a treadmill. A really big treadmill. Hmm. Probably used for cars. <laughs> they have a massive car treadmill to test their cars. Test the speed of their cars. I, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, because they can't test it out on the roads. You know, that's too public. So I guess they got to test it in their little basement. It doesn't sound safe, though. No, <laughs> it really a doesn't. A treadmill for a car? <laughs> you have to, like, really monitor your speed very carefully so you don't speeds go too fast too, or too slow. Up, the Ooh. treadmill speeds up a little too fast, just throws the car off the back. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just brake. You slam on the brake. <laughs> car flies back. Boom. <laughs> Probably used for cars. Oh, wow, I say. So, you want me to run on it? Yep, Jameson says. It can go up to 1,000 miles per hour. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's for cars. It was used to k test cars that were made to go at supersonic speeds. Oh, what? <laughs> CIA has cars that can go to supersonic speeds. <laughs> it's not even controllable. <laughs> <laughs> it's not aircraft. It's a car. Yeah, you, you know, in the sky, there's not really anything to run into, but you know, on the ground, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing to run into in the sky is other planes and birds. That's about it. Superman, you know. And Superman. <laughs> Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. What's a plane. All right. <laughs> yep, Jim says it can go up to 1,000 miles per hour. It was used to test cars that were made to go to supersonic speeds. Since you also go at supersonic speeds, I thought that it would be perfect for you. Well, what are we waiting for? I say enthusiastically. Let's get started. Okay, go stand on it. And when you're ready, let me know. I walk over or just or just start it without telling him. Just <laughs> a thousand miles per hour right away. <laughs> <laughs> I walk over and jump on it. 
I stand in a running position, ready to go. All right, I'm ready. Okay, Jameson says, standing next to the controls. I'll start you off at about 30 miles per hour and slowly raise it until you can't go any faster. Until the floor flings you off the back. You <laughs> until, <pull it> <laughs> until you go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have invulnerability powers like Jameson does. But like you'd think you'd have like fast healing because that's like a common speed ability as well because if you can move really fast so, maybe your body can heal itself true. fast too yeah that's mm. true i feel like you end yourself really easily having super speed like it's, accidentally run into a wall or something like yeah <clears throat> yeah that's, that's that's that is true so maybe he has like some level of vulnerability i don't know um okay jameson says standing next to the controls i'll start you off at about 30 miles per hour and slowly raise it until you can't go any faster the floor of the treadmill begins to move once it gets to 30 miles per hour, I am running with ease. A few seconds pass. And imagine running with ease at 30 miles an hour. That'd be awesome. I can do that. Yeah. Just not 30 miles an hour? Nothing. It's like a light jog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a few seconds pass, and it begins to go a little faster. 40 miles per hour, Jameson says, into, into a microphone. I guess he would have to talk into a microphone, because it's probably really loud. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a quiet treadmill. <laughs> Could be. It is still getting faster. 50 miles per hour. 60. 70. 80. 90. Yeah, they just go through each, 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 each one. 100 miles per hour. It, wait, what? It to go faster. Wait, wait, wait. Suddenly stops. It suddenly stops. I can't do this. Right. Okay. I'm going to cut that out. 100 miles per hour. <clears throat> it suddenly stops accelerating. You doing okay? I give a quick thumbs up and signal to go faster. It begins to accelerate again. 110 miles per hour. 120. Are we going to go through each individual one? 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 100, 200. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now it is going so fast I can't even hear what Jameson is saying anymore it's still accelerating my legs are finally beginning to hurt my head is pounding it's harder to breathe but I know that I can go faster still <clears throat> it'll just take a little more endurance I keep running I have no idea how fast I'm going but I'm pretty sure that this treadmill is getting close to its limit then I hear something an extremely loud boom. Next thing I know, I am launched off of the treadmill and into the wall. I black out for a few seconds, and when I come to, Jameson is standing next to me. Okay, so I guess he does have some sort of invulnerability because he's not well, like I was gonna say has he, doesn't have like shattered bones. He has to because like imagine yeah. like when he when uh, he knocked out the blade guy, the death blade guy. Yeah, that's true. If, if you're running really fast and you punch somebody, knock him out like. It's gonna shatter it's gonna, your fist yeah. if you like. That's you're if you're moving your body ability. that fast, no, that is too, true. Also, that is true. Yeah, that that is true. Jameson sitting next to me. Are you okay? He asks me. Yeah, I say. I have a little headache, but other than that, I'm pretty good. They break. The sound Do you realize there. what just happened? Jameson says. Sonic. Boom. You hit the speed of sound, causing a sonic boom, which launched you off the treadmill. Wait. They didn't like. See, I didn't think about this. This car is made to test. <laughs> <laughs> supersonic cars they didn't like think of an idea to stop a sound you know, a sonic boom inside a tiny building like, maybe there was like this car had a special design i don't know that prevented it somehow i don't know but. well wait though would it actually create a sonic boom because you're not actually moving that fast because you're technically on a treadmill so you're not actually like going anywhere that's true you're not breaking any air you know to make a sonic boom <laughs> i don't know we maybe don't have to, we don't have to look too, <laughs> I don't too, know. too far whatever it. it's just a dumb word <laughs> <It doesn't, laughs> do you realize what, um, <laughs> you hit the speed of sound causing a sonic boom which launched you off the treadmill wow the speed of sound only extremely high powered jets can go that fast Actually, most jets can go that fast. The most so. jets. You know, I don't know this stuff. Okay? <laughs> I didn't know this stuff when I was writing this. All right. That's the end of that chapter. So, Sonic Boom. 
We gotta. We gotta. We gotta oh, Sonic I if that's gonna be his name. Sonic oh. Boom. <laughs> Ch- no, it's Sonic. Remember, that's their code name, Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Um, chapter thirty-one. Nathan Thompson. Okay, so now we can find out where, where Nathan what? is after the kidnapping. It's the first we've heard of him since he was kidnapped. On the edge of my seat for this one. <clears throat> I wake up lying on a big, comfortable bed that looks like it should belong to a king. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> That's, he's got some luxury for being a kidnapped person. Yeah. Let me put our kidnapped people in the, like, super nice king bedrooms. I am in a huge room that also looks like it should belong to a king. I am wearing very expensive looking pajamas. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm Whoa. wondering what, ha- and wondering <laughs> what happened to my clothes. I'd be wondering that too. <laughs> um, Maybe Abigail changed him. Yeah, Didn't right. kidnap him? <laughs> I sit up and feel the top of my head to find that my hat is missing. <gasps> oh, I need no. to find it. I feel naked without my hat. <laughs> Me too. I'm not a hat guy. Uh, he wears like a uh, not. Th- he wears a um, like beanie. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah. People wear beanies all the time. Are weird. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I uh, t- you know, when I rewrite this, maybe I'll change the character design. All right. I stand up and when? walk over to the door. <laughs> <laughs> when I rewrite it. <laughs> I stand up. Okay. I stand up and walk over to the door. I try to open it, but it is locked. So I decide to see if I can find a way to break out and if possible, <clears throat> find my clothes, hat, and backpack. I look in a dresser drawer to find my clothes and hat nicely folded. I get dressed, leaving the pajamas on the bed. I put my hat on as I start to think of a way to get out of here. I look at all the walls and there are no windows. I put the mattress, I pull the mattress off the bed. I start ripping apart the bed springs. Maybe I can use one to pick the lock. Smart. I pull one out. Rip apart this really fancy room. <laughs> Doesn't do, even do, want do to find out why he's there first. He's still kidnapped. Jeez. Um, I pull one out and, wa- and he's locked in the room and walk back to the door. I bend the spring inch until it is straight and pull the end, put the end in the lock. I work at it for a few seconds and the door opens. He's good at picking locks. I couldn't pick a lock with a bed spring. Mm. He's a 13 year old kid. <laughs> I know. Wow. Well, I think that's like, he's supposed to, that's the type of character he's supposed to be. He's supposed he's like to be like, like a smart, really resourceful. Like freaking Alex Ryder. Yeah, he's like a really <laughs> resourceful character. Like, like he's really like scrappy and like resourceful. Like like he's not necessarily physically super strong or like really good at fighting or anything particular like that. He's just like yeah, yeah. Hmm. knows how to think on the fly like that. You know. I peek my head out and all I see is a long hallway with a bunch of doors. I step out of the door as quiet as possible so that no one will hear me. I feel really, I feel really insecure in this hallway. <laughs> Is that the right word? <laughs> this hallway, man. I feel fat in this hallway. I feel really ugly in this hallway. I feel insecure. <laughs> um, maybe I should have said unsecure? I don't know. Unsecure. Probably. I feel really insecure in this hallway. <laughs> With all these doors, I never know when someone could walk out on me. Oh, no. <laughs> then I remember something. What I should be doing is trying to find Abigail, but how do I find her? She could be in any one of these doors. And then again, she might not. There's no way I could check every door without (laughs) without people realizing that I've escaped. Um, he promised to never read her mind again. Okay. He's not going to break that promise. Jeez. Oh, okay. (laughs) Or, or can I? Of course I could read minds. All need to do, I was probably supposed to say all I need to do. All I need to do is try to read the minds of the people in all of the rooms. I close my eyes and concentrate on one of the doors. Nope, this is definitely not her. I move on to the next room. Still no signs of her. I keep moving to the left until I get to the end. Still, she is not in any of the rooms. I walk back until I get to the other end of the hall. She is still nowhere to be found. I try to think what to do next when I hear footsteps. 
They are coming toward the other end of the hall, and I don't have time to go back into my room. I very quickly open the door to a room at the end of the hall and walk in. As I close the door behind me, I look and see that this room is an office. I am relieved to find that no one is in here. I put my ear up to the door to see if I can hear anything. I hear that they are walking toward the back of the hall. I try to see if I can read any of their minds. Yep, just as I thought. They are going to come into this room. <gasps> I have to hide, but where? I can't see a place where they would not be able to find me. Wait, there's a window. I could hide in the windowsill behind the curtain. I quickly and quietly run over to the window and jump in the windowsill. I close the curtains just as they step in the room. I peek out and see two men, and the odd thing is that I recognize both of them. One is Lyle Crape, Abigail's father. The other is Justin Lee, <gasps> the Prime Minister of Great Britain. What is he doing Wait, there? None of these buttons will work for that. Let's gotta do like a. I should get like a dun dun dun, or like a. <gasps> I should get a gasping one. <gasps> Um, Abigail's Okay. The other is Justin Lee. So, they are the ones who kidnapped Dad. They must be. How is the operation going? Crabe asks Lee. It's going very well, Lee answers. Except for one thing. And what might that be? Wait, I need you to speak in a Russian accent. And the, I can't do a Russian accent. I'm not even going to try. And what might that be? <laughs> but there's like... <laughs> I mean, he's lived in America. Wow. Oh, that's true. I he forgot. He doesn't have to have a Russian <laughs> Like, I mean, like Abigail doesn't at all. But he loves Russia, so he loves Mother Russia so much that he just forces a Russian accent, even if he doesn't have one. She's just like, you were raised by an American family. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Russia. I drink vodka every he's day. A sleeper agent. <laughs> Communism rules. <laughs> Communism, yes. All right, bear shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> <We don't laughs> anyway, and what might that be? We don't have a sample of the infection, the most important part of the operation. <gasps> so they're after the in they're they're trying to do something with the infection. Ooh, interesting. Get some. I want my army of super soldiers as soon as possible. <gasps> oh, we just learned a little bit about Whoa. their plan. Surprise. Ooh. With all due respect, sir, we can't just get some. This stuff has only ever been found once in an asteroid that hit Earth's surface four or five months ago. Still, it's like it's like Spider-Man Three. It just hit the hit. You need some. You need a weird substance. It just slammed Earth in an asteroid. Yeah. All right. The only known sample of it was destroyed in an explosion. Hmm. Are you sure it was destroyed? I want you to send men to the site of the explosion and see if you can find enough of it for our bombs. Yes, sir. Lee says as he begins to leave the room. Before he leaves, Crepe stops him and says, Do be careful, Justin. I hear this stuff is radioactive. Lee nods his head and leaves the room. Is it radioactive? Because wouldn't the characters radioactive, have radiation poisoning radioactive. of some kind if it was actually radioactive? Well, it depends. Because, I mean, their powers could also affect how radiation would affect them, too. I mean, yeah, but still. But if he hears it is, that doesn't mean it is. That's true. Yeah. Infection? Super soldiers? Bomb? Radioactive? This does radioactive. not sound good. They're obviously talking about the explosion at Dad's lab. Really? Really? <laughs> I need to find a way out of here so I can warn my brothers. I also must find Abigail. Whatever they're planning, they must be stopped. Boom, wow. boom. That was, oh. You know what? That was a good chapter. That was an important chapter. I actually think that was a... That chapter actually wasn't that bad. No. That was probably one of the better chapters so far. <laughs> yes. That chapter wasn't that bad. <laughs> 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 um, no, but like I feel like in general it was you know 
it's, it's a good chapter. Sure. You know, we got some some yeah. lock picking, cool lock picking, escaping. Yep. Got some got some impo- actual important information. You know, mm-hmm. chapter thirty two. This is our last chapter of the day. Jameson Thompson. We decide to hit Lee's mansion Friday night, a week after the explosion. We had been practicing our skills all week and now believe we are ready. Steve and I are standing on the outside of the gate that leads into the mansion, wearing our hoods and masks. So so keep in mind, this is the the Lee mansion in D.C., not the one in London. Okay. (laughs) Gotta specify. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, Hoods and masks. Um, Zach is already in because of his ability to phase through solid objects. We are just waiting for him to open the gates. I have a high-powered shotgun in my hands. Steve, a 1911. That's accurate up to 75 yards. <laughs> what if I said that? <laughs> just... Every time it mentions a 1911, <laughs> that is accurate at 75 yards. <laughs> and Zach, an AR-15. Oof. Then, Good choice. the gates finally open. <laughs> And there is Zach standing on the other side, also wearing his hood and mask. <clears throat> you disabled the security systems? I ask. Yep, Zach replies. Now follow me. So how does he know how to just disable the security systems? Well, maybe he's, he's smart. smart. He's a he's a soon to be cop. Okay, they know everything. Yeah, <laughs> they teach you that when you're soon to be a cop. How to disable security systems. When you're a teenager who wants to be a cop. Yeah, they one teach day. you how to disable security systems. You didn't know didn't that? Didn't even yeah. go to the police academy yet. <laughs> Just wants to be a cop when he's older. Um, mm-hmm. We all run to the building. At, wait, yep, Zach replies. Wait, blah, 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 blah. Oh, follow me. Sorry, I just missed that. We all run to the building as quickly, as quietly as possible. We run into the front door and begin up the stairs. We open the door to his bedroom, and there he is lying on his bed. <laughs> Just interrupt Justin Lee and his sleeping. Wake up, Zach yells as Lee jumps up. Oddly enough, he doesn't appear startled. Oh, interesting. Do you expect him? Yeah. Zach grabs him by the shirt and lifts him out of the bed. What do you know about Snake? 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 Lee answers. I don't know those snakes. <laughs> Lee answers. <laughs> I don't know those snakes. Lee answers as if he doesn't know what we're talking about. Well, I do know that a snake is a slimy reptile, if that's what you're more wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Mm. Don't play this game with me, Zach yells as he throws Lee to the ground and picks him back up. That should jog your memory. Now I'll ask again. What do you know about Snake? I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about, Lee answers. Hey, wait a minute. You're the guys they talked about on the news. The Hooded Three. What? No, we're not. (laughs) No, we're not. What? (laughs) You really put the fear of God into those guys. Yes, they say. That is who we are. So, you know what we can do. So you better figure on telling us. We know that you somehow have ties with the communist terrorist organization called Snake. We'll find out one way or another, so you might as well tell us now. Okay, Lee says. It's obvious that you already know, so there's no hiding the fact that I do have ties with Snake. In fact, I am leading one of their most highly top secret operations called SIB. It's a SI, it looks like an acronym. <laughs> I am surprised at how cooperative he is being. Something's not right. If this is so top secret, he wouldn't even tell us it exists. Do you mind telling us what SIB is? Zach asked. I actually forgot what that acronym stood for. It's an acronym. Lee answers. <laughs> okay, let's go. Really? The S stands for super. The I stands for infection. And, wait, Zach, I interrupt. Something's not right. Why would he be so cooperative? I don't know, Zach says. <laughs> he didn't even tell you what the B, wait for him to finish with the B, <laughs> talking. <laughs> didn't tell you what the B stands for. But he's giving us the information. We might as well take it now. Now... <laughs> 
giving us the information, we might as well take it. Now where were we? Oh yes. What does the B stand for? I would tell you, but it's too late, Lee says. Just look behind you. All our heads turn as we see that there are about 10 to 20 futuristic looking robots behind us. Whoa. <laughs> so they're sitting here interrogating me. I didn't hear <laughs> the robot. 20 robots they walking by. They are very them. quiet robots. Okay. There's like <laughs> super silent Where's robots. Where's Steve for all this? He's not watching their back. Stealth robots. <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> the, nobody's watching their six. <laughs> wow. Wow. Come on. <laughs> Rookies. <laughs> It's like they just started doing this the other day. <laughs> I know, right? It's like they just started doing it a week ago or whatever. <laughs> it's like they just got their powers a week ago. Uh, as we pull up our guns and begin firing at them, Lee runs away. End of chapter. <gasps> Wait. Oh, wait there's no good button. We need that. a we need a we need no, a gas don't, button. Don't. <gasps> Either. A... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of that chapter. Very exciting, very exciting. Uh, but sadly, it's also the last chapter of the day. So um, we got some exciting news coming. Um, what do you guys think the B stands for in SIB? It's Super Infection Bomb. <laughs> what? Why? Just, what makes you think that? I mean, they were talking about a bomb earlier. What makes you think that? Wait, 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 wait. So if this <laughs> infection gives people superpowers, what is their plan with this bomb? Infect a ton of people and make them superheroes? <laughs> you, what kind of criminal plan no, is that? You, you, you'll find out. We don't know their plan completely. We just have a general idea. We know it has something to do with a, a super soldier army and the infection and a, a, bomb. a bomb. So I totally don't know what the B stands for in SIB. Definitely yeah, not, not a bomb. bomb. It's probably super infection burrito bulldozer <laughs> super infection burrito that's a good way to do it <laughs> they just put a the bunch infection. of mexican super soldiers <laughs> <laughs> anybody who goes out to eat mexican just eats a burrito filled with the infection yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay burrito gives you superpowers i don't know though it's it's you know I'm, uh, this is this is where the book's getting exciting you know it it's, is it's, we got i'm on the edge of my seat <laughs> um I'm on the edge of my seat, literally. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, anyways, um, definitely excited to find out what happens next week. Um, so, yeah, if you want to find out what happens next week, definitely tune in. Um, it'll be uploaded on Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time. That is our upload schedule. Every Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time is when this when this comes out it is available on a couple different platforms you can listen to it on spotify and you can also listen to it on youtube there should be links in the description um if you're on one and you want to listen to it on the other so that way you can listen to it on whichever platform you prefer mm -hmm. um it's on my youtube channel which is called nim tv so definitely check out my youtube channel and also you can check out nathan's youtube channel which mm -hmm. is called nate the great and there's a link in the description to that as well definitely so anyways that's it this has been the greatest book never published I am Nim. I'm Nate the Great. I'm Steve. Until next time, goodbye everyone. Goodbye.